So hello, everybody out in Facebook land. We're live today. We have another episode of Lead Up for Women, Speak Up to Lead Up. And I have my good friend, Jill Lublin, here with me today. And uh, I'm really excited that we're already at episode 109. Uh, we've been doing this for a couple of years now, and it's very exciting every time we get the opportunity to jump on here. So let's go ahead and talk about the power of kindness today. Why don't we, Jill? Let's get it rolling. I would love to. And I'm so glad to be here with you, Colleen. You're amazing in your leadership and you're kind. And, you know, as we know, <laughs> kindness is key. So is. I'm so glad to be here. It is. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Let's go ahead and get the podcast started. Here we go. Hello, listeners, and welcome back to another episode of Lead Up for Women, Speak Up to Lead Up. I am super excited for the title of what we're speaking about today, which is the power of kindness. There is so much power behind being kind to others and how that fulfills us in our lives by serving others. Yet as women, so often we don't allow, we deflect others from allowing them to, pre to present kindness to us, to serve us, because we think we can do it all. And even though we can do it all, it is still important to remember that others want to serve us too. And you know that feeling when you're serving someone and how great it feels to be able to do something kind for them or nice for them. And then all of a sudden, when someone wants to do something nice for us, we say, oh, no, I got it. Don't worry about it. We need to allow others to serve us too. And that is a daily practice that we need to put in place. For women, I get it. It doesn't come easy. The asking part, the serving part of allowing people to do those things for us. We're first in line to do it for others. But today, let's really practice working on allowing others to be able to serve us and to be able to show kindness to us and say, thank you. Don't make up excuses. If they say, oh, I love your shoes. Oh, thanks. I just purchased them for $20 last week. Just say, thank you. I love these shoes too. That's why I bought them. So again, today we're talking about the power of kindness. And I want to introduce my first guest, which is Jill Lublin to be with us today. I've been um, part of Jill's crash courses that she's done. I've been part of her courses to learn more about how to market ourselves in media. You know, we have our geniuses in one specific area. And we have to remember that others have geniuses in other areas, and we need to ask for help to learn from them in other areas that we're not proficient in. And then that way, we have the opportunity to be able to then teach others that, you know, we just keep passing, passing that down. So, Jill, welcome to the show. And let me tell our guests a little bit about you. Uh, we're live now on Facebook, but, you know, when our listeners are listening to this podcast, uh, they don't get the opportunity to see your beautiful face. So for those of you listening to this, you can pop over anytime and follow us at Lead Up for Women uh, on Facebook, Instagram, as well as YouTube. And please uh, also visit our website for all of the free tools, events, and download a copy of your free um, free latest issue of our magazine. So Jill is an international speaker on the topic, topic of radical influence. I love that, Jill. Publicity, networking, kindness, and referrals. She's the author of four best-selling books, including Get Noticed, Get Referrals, and co-author of Guerrilla Publicity and Networking Magic. Now, her latest book, The Prophet of Kindness, went number one in four Category. She's the CEO of a strategic consulting firm and has over 25 years experience working with over 100,000 people plus national and international media. And Jill, you've been featured everywhere. So thank you for being featured on the Lead Up for Women podcast. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So glad to be here. So Jill, I need to ask the question because I don't even know this and I don't know if my listeners know this either about you. Where in your life um, did, did, uh, it navigate to get you to PR? What happened in ah. your world? You know, where did you, where did you come from and what, what happened in, you know, originally when, maybe when you were younger and, and what appealed to you about networking and, and PR and media, or was that something that wasn't until later in life that you found? Well, it was interesting because I grew up wanting to be an attorney. And I thought being an attorney would be a great way to really help people using the legal system, right, to be effective. 
And uh, really wanted to be an attorney. Part of that was due to the fact that no one in my uh, family had been to college. I was actually the first one to go to college and then to law school. Well, I got to law school and uh, it was not for me. I mean, the truth is my brain, I'm highly creative and I call it a butterfly brain. It's not the kind of best opportunity for uh, law school. And so when I got to law school though, I thought, how can I get through this first year uh, so that I have something interesting? Cause you know, I, I'm very creative. I like interesting things. Well, I started working for music business attorneys. And I actually, that led to my career in the music business because I did drop out of law school after the first year. And much to my father's chagrin, who's like, now what are you gonna do? I'm like, I'm gonna be an entrepreneur. And he said, what is it and how do you spell it? <laughs> so, um, you know, being an entrepreneur is obviously, as we all know, a continuous journey. And, and because I was in the music business, I actually started as director of promotion and publicity at independent record labels. And I was at four of them in multiple genres and uh, genres of music. And, and to me, that was wonderful and exciting and definitely a much better fit for who I am. So that's really how my career started and then um, navigated into my publicity career. So we have to talk about that back in the day when you were working with independent record labels. What was that like? Who did you get to meet? What was that industry like at that time? Well, I think it was a lot uh, more, it was better than it is now in the sense that a couple things were going on. One is music was being made, you know, and sold and, and marketed. Now the truth is, honestly, anybody can make music, which opens up the playing field tremendously. And that's exciting. And I think actually a tremendous opportunity for all. Um, but, you know, when I was in the heart of it, I felt like really, um, in, had an opportunity to make real inroads and create listening habits for people. I talked to radio DJs across the country to, shall we say, gently convince them to play our music. Um, it was also a time when there were weird bribes going on from major record labels. See, we were an independent record label. We didn't have a budget, which is where I learned how to be guerrilla publicity because we had to come up with creative, unique ways to get major attention. And my friends at other labels at the bigger labels, like we go to these music biz conventions together and they'd have million dollar budgets. I'm like, hey, Colleen, give me a million dollars. I'll make anyone famous, right? That's much easier. So I always felt like I was learning and growing and had the opportunity to really put into practice unique and unusual uh, marketing tactics. Like, like we made our record dividers purple. Now, if I had worked for a major corporate record label, we probably wouldn't have been able to do that. But we were able to do that and catch, you know, catch more attention that way, for example. So um, we just did some unique things. Like I got a major New York uh, City disc jockey, rock and roll guy, to play one of our electronic symphonic new age music labels and you know that actually launched us into spas all around the world you know so doing i had the creativity and the wherewithal and the ability as director of promotion at to do lots of different things you know some of which worked and some which fell flat but it was very exciting for me as an opportunity to do that. So that that was wonderful. That we had great parties, you know, that was a time of all the great parties. The, the conventions were really fun. Um, it was a bit of a wild west in the music business. And, and uh, I had really a unique opportunity to work also with Bill Graham. He was a major rock and roll promoter who started two very big uh, Fillmore East in New York and Fillmore West in San Francisco. So I worked directly with their organization. I had really unique and wonderful opportunities to be with some pretty big names in the music business to get to really know people, to hang out and to go to lots of shows, which of course I loved. 
Yes, yeah, absolutely. And I want to circle back around to something you said, which really leads me into my next subject. You talked about having to be creative and having to help each one of these artists because you were an independent record label and you didn't have the budget, which let's let's go ahead and 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 um measure that with female entrepreneurs today. Um, not many of them have a million dollar marketing budget. Very few of them do to be able to get themselves out there, to be known, to be seen and to be visible, which is everything Lead Up For Women stands for. So as you were working with these independent label um, artists, you had to be extremely creative, right? In what you were doing and putting together for them. And so let's talk about the ways in which many entrepreneurs today can be creative to show how they stand out, to show how they're different. What are some of the advice that you give for the clients you work with and those that come through your courses and, and those that you meet? Sure. So um, a couple things that I want to just point out from publicity crash courses is, is the power of your message, the power of your message. And so I think a lot of entrepreneurs get really stuck in this is what I do. Forget about that for a moment and think about what will be most effective for what's going on in the media right now. Like one young woman I've got right now going through my publicity crash course, she's 26. She's an Instagram influencer and she owns a digital media company. And I just think that's wonderful. And I said to her, we've got stop Asian hate going on right now. You're Filipino, let's get you out about that. That's what she's been actually getting a ton of attention for, thereby increasing her speaking engagements and her clients. So very excited about that. Um, I'm also really big on uh, use everything you've got, which relates to what I was just talking about. So use who you are as, as a human being, as a woman. There's International Women's Month, right? Or International Women's Day. Start planning for that for next year. Look at the holidays. How can you fit in each, not each month. I don't want you out each month. I think that's a little too much, but take a look at maybe three major holidays. How could you fit in? Like I had a parenting coach and she helped parents raise their kids after a divorce. Well, I had her be in a Valentine's Day for how to fall out of love. And that got her three major TV spots. It got her in four newspapers, as well as uh, seven radio shows and, and work that kind, of, that kind of story. Use everything you've got. That's really powerful and really works. Those are some good, good hints for right now. Yeah, those are great tips. And so that means we need to be paying attention to what's happening in the world today, whether you're doing that through looking at the media on your computer. I know, you know, I tend to want to limit a lot of what comes through my TV and what comes through for news, because let's just face it, most of it's not even positive news. So I choose to get rid of those time suckers or negative energy suckers, but we still need to be aware of what's happening in the world today. And then how do you take what it is that you stand for? What is your why? What is it that, that, um, it, that you do in the world that makes an impact? And then how can you take that and look at what's happening in the world today to massage that message a little bit? And that's what I love for what you stand for, Jill, is it's really just a tweak uh, it's really just a, a just a, a gentle shift, and many people aren't sure how to do that, uh, you know, in their message and what they're looking for. Uh, but that's really, you know, the more you show up and the more visible you are, the more you're seen, and the more you're seen, the more you attract people to you, which then attracts other doors and opportunities that will open. Um, so let's talk a little bit about. I know that you have kindness circles. I know that you have several things that you do in the area of kindness. So let's shift our focus to kindness and talk to me a little bit about what kindness means to you and why have you really gone down the road of creating kindness circles and bringing people together for that? Absolutely. Before we do that, I want to give you one other very simple way to keep that news feed controlled. Yeah. Since you brought it up, if I might, and that is it's called Google Alerts. So sign yourself up for Google Alerts, put in your name, that way when there is something written about you or 
featured you will know and put in one word about what you do you know so Colleen might be women entrepreneurship two words but that's okay um you know so find one word so then now moving over to kindness i did this for google alerts and when profit of kindness came out i put in the word kindness you know what i found out november 13th is world kindness day right and so that became an impetus for me for putting together now a yearly kindness summit it's virtual so everybody can attend we had over 120 people on our first one last year which to me said so much about our need for kindness and you know the book came out actually because of a friend of mine who i was helping her through her aging process she's still alive at 85 and doing great um well maybe not so great but certainly I'm just so grateful to still have her on this earth to love and to hug. And, uh, you know, she, one of the things I was doing was driving her to a doctor's appointment. And she said, you are so kind. And wouldn't it be nice if we had a new currency, she said, the currency of kindness. And I thought, oh, I love that idea, right? And that became the profit of kindness. And what I realized when the pandemic hit was how much we all needed it. I watched somebody yell at somebody in a supermarket because they felt they were too close and you know everybody was scared and um, there's a lot of tenseness, right? And I thought, boy, do we need kindness more than ever. So I started putting together what God had planted as a seed in my heart to call kindness circles. And as soon as the book came out, actually before the book came out, I had this idea and like everything, sometimes a seed takes a little while to sprout. This one took about two years. And then all of a sudden, when the pandemic hit, I said, we are doing kindness circles like now. And, um, and I started it and 40 people showed up and 60 people showed up. And now we have a year of kindness community where we do meet every month and we uh, give and exchange leads. We stay connected. We have amazing thought leaders who give very short presentations on kindness and related to what they're doing, like a Harlem Globetrotter I have coming this month. So I have people continually coming in. It's a wonderful um, community that really shares. And so what, what I see is the difference they're making because they also have assignments in their own communities. And then of course, being in PR, I've given them an assignment to um, show up in the People Magazine Kindness Awards for November. Did you know that People Magazine always does a November kindness, you know, circulation of kindness all month long? I so, did not know that. Yeah. So again, we're all learning something new. Yes. Well, you know, let's all apply, right? The yes. more the merrier. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty darn exciting. So, so it's been a, a wonderful opportunity for people to really come together and definitely offline conversations, lots of businesses being done. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to be a creator of these connections, to be a person who lays the foundation for kindness that each one of us can practice. And this is what I really want people to, to practice is those conscious acts of kindness every single day. Not yeah. random acts, conscious acts. Yes, it's a practice. Again, like the practice of allowing others to be kind to us, to serve us. It's easy for us to do it for others. But I love the consciousness and making sure it's not random. But it's like, it's the difference of, you know, saying, oh yeah, I have gratitude. I say thank you or please. That's way different than practicing gratitude and focusing on practicing gratitude. So thank you again for sharing that. And Jill, let's share with our listeners, how can they... Um, how can they sign up for one of these circles of kindness that you do to be part of that, to connect with others in Thank that you. area? Yeah, absolutely. You go to jilllublin.com mm -hmm. slash kindness circles, and that will bring you into our wonderful free ones we do consistently monthly, and then uh, happy to have you join our year of kindness community. But definitely go to jilllublin.com slash kindness circles. Thank you, Jill, for sharing that. And for all of you that are listening right now, 
um, at your fingertips. We'll have the link there for you. So all you'll have to do is just click on that link. We'll make it easy for you to hop on over on your smartphone or whatever phone you're on to be able to get to Jill and sign up for that. I highly recommend that you take advantage of being in those circles because you just never know who you're going to meet. And as I've said it before, your network is your net worth. So you want to be surrounding yourself, not only with kind people, but with people that are practicing kindness and are there on purpose for kindness and want to share and and lift others. Um, that's, you know, I think one of the, like you said, it's currency and uh, it's something that we should practice daily. So Jill, tell us what else do you have going on right now? Well, I, I, first of all, I'm just loving the year of kindness community. It's, it warms my heart. Um, it makes me slightly nervous, which I always take as a good sign, right? Because as we lead new initiatives and develop ourselves in new ways, um, I think that that's powerful to feel a little nervous. I don't know about you, but every time I go speak somewhere, I always feel that little bit of nervousness. And I think that's really good. And that's also what I have going on. I do a lot of speaking virtually. It's been a lot easier than getting on a ton of planes. And that's been a real blessing. I'm networking all over the place and meeting the most magnificent people. You know, groups like yours is so incredible for that. Um, and then I teach a virtual publicity course where, of course, you've taken that and you've done my next part program. Uh, so I'm loving that. I teach my virtual publicity course actually twice a month. People pick one date and I, it's going really, really good. And I think a lot of that is because I pivoted it properly, right? And listen, this course, I used to uh, get on a plane and go to different cities in, in North America and teach it. And that was wonderful. And occasionally overseas in London or in Frankfurt, uh, where I go for people to help them with their books. And yes, that is wonderful. But I'll tell you, it has been even better to reformat the classes. Actually, Colleen, I, I lowered my prices, like seriously, lowered all my prices. And it's been an interesting and wonderful journey because what I've been able to do is now serve more people very affordably. And, you know, I'm, I, for me, that's in, uh, an accomplishment of my mission, which is helping messengers get their messages out. So I'm just thrilled and um, delighted that I'm able to, to really do this on a continuous basis. So that's been a blessing for me. Yeah, and let's talk about that virtually very quickly because the world shifted. And um, you know, one one day I'm speaking in India, the next day I'm speaking in North Carolina, the next, you know, maybe in the same day I'm speaking, you know, in uh, New York. And so normally we would have to get on a plane, you know, fly there, speak. You're wasting three days sometimes, you know, speaking somewhere. And virtually has really brought to me, I see it's really brought the nation of, of, of the world together. We have women that are out of the country that are joining our events, that are joining our circle, same with you. And um, this, this new world of virtual has opened up the opportunity for us to spread kindness even further, right? And I do know that a hug, there's just nothing like a hug, right? Or being in person with a group of people, but you can feel the energy, you can, you can still influence, you can still impact others through the lens through the, you know, the computer. And uh, what has that done for your business, Jill, to be able to be virtual? Oh, I, I am, I'm telling you, I am so grateful because what I've seen, number one, I have saved I, a lot of money. I actually measured $45,000 in savings just on my hotel meeting rooms, hotel overnights, and plane travel. Okay, just those three things, and there's more, but those three things, $45,000 in one year, which by the way, I reinvested in coaches, in, in masterminds, in keeping my training up leveled. So how wonderful is that, right? Um, and yeah. so that's been powerful that I keep rolling, not to mention the levels of connections for me has really expanded, expanded exactly for the reason you're talking about. We have an opportunity to reach people all around the world right now. And, um, and then people on top of that are more Zoom, they're Zoom friendly, right? So 
I can see and engage. Um, people will say to me, oh, I love your energy because my energy is my energy. It's gonna come through that screen just as all of yours is. And by the way, you don't have to be like, woo woo all the time. But you know, one thing I do must say is that since you are on Zoom, yeah, up, up and amp up your energy just a little more than you would normally do, just like you would do on media. And, and every client of mine, I would say the same thing too. So yes, you wanna up-level your energy for just a bit, particularly when you're talking um, and use that a bit of speaker voice and, and amp up your excitement. But the truth is your energy will come forth. So particularly for me, it's been around connections, um, expanded network, like I never even dreamed of, by the way. And just like you, I am not only speaking sometimes three to four times a day, all week long, well, not three, you know, but lots of lots of speaking engagements all week long that I never might have been able to do. And I'm able to attend networking meetings and place be in places and spaces that I couldn't do, including, by the way, even my local one. We had a meeting that used to be at 8.30 on Fridays. Now, I don't know about you. I'm just not a big morning kind of girl. That's my truth. So at 8.30 on Friday to drive an hour, I had to be up at, you know, maybe 6.30 or maybe 7. Not my favorite time. I do do it, but it's just not my favorite time. So how about this? I roll out of bed. I get myself, you know, showered and ready. And guess what? I'm on Zoom. That's like a 40 minute process versus a two hour process. Plus, I don't, you know, all the driving we used to do back and forth to places, it's just so much easier. So I, I feel like my self care has gone way up, way yeah. up. And I am so grateful for that. Yeah. I think that we've definitely all focused a little bit more on paying attention to how our bodies feel. And we were really running ourselves ragged. You know, I look at, my history of my Fitbit watch that I wear from last year or the year before. And it was like four hours of sleep, five hours of sleep, six hours of sleep. Now it's like seven hours of sleep. You know, I'm going to bed earlier. I'm getting up earlier. I'm spending more time on gratitudes and I'm, I'm really being more present and it's allowing me to be Oh my gosh. I'm not You're sure. What, I'm not sure what just happened right there. I've never had an outage of my internet ever since I've been doing this. So I'm, I'm glad that I'm glad that I'm back and I'm sorry. I don't know where I lost everybody there. Uh, and I apologize for that, Jill. That's never happened to us before. But the last tip I was giving was the tip of our backgrounds, right? If you can look at Jill, you can see she has her books behind her. You can see she's a published author behind me. You can see I have my magazine and my journals and my books and my banner to show that I have a podcast. So when I get on and I'm speaking or talking to anyone, everyone knows that um, these are my items behind me. And so um, Jill, what are a couple tips you can give before we sign off here? So a couple of things, make sure your name is a proper in the Zoom, right? I, I can't believe how people still forget that part. Watch your lighting, make sure your lighting looks good and that your center stage, you know, yes, Colleen has her beautiful banners and books and journals in her background that we can see, by the way, I remember telling you, move them up. I need to see them even better, right? Yes, you can see these, um, but what center stage Colleen is, Jill is, right? So that's important. Um, and then know what your point is. You know, I like to have three main points and then make sure you have a giveaway, something that people can stay connected to you, for you, and that best shows you. So you definitely always want to have a giveaway and be driving people back to stay with you. I absolutely agree with that. Those are great tips, Jill. So let's talk about something you have to give away today and how people can reach you, especially if they want to attend. We talked about your kindness circles already, but if they want to attend one of your PR crash courses, how can someone get in touch with you, Jill, and follow up with you today? 
Absolutely. So I've got a free publicity masterclass, very loaded with content and live and interactive with me. So come on to that, jilllublin.com slash publicity. And my friends, I want to give you an action guide. Like if you like these tips, wait till you hear more that I have for you. Um, Create it into an action guide that's simple and templated and gives you wonderful uh, free publicity tips to do right now. So to get that, you go to publicitycrashcourse.com slash action guide. All right. So that that's for, for you. There's multiple things to pick from. Do them all. I promise you, you're going to love it. Absolutely. And you can always find Jill at jillulum.com. Uh, we will have all of her links there. Everything that she just talked about will be available to you at your fingertips. Again, if, you have, if you're on Facebook and you're watching the video or you've watched the video and you have any questions, please put those down in the comments section and Jill and her team will get back to you on that. So Jill, thank you again so much for being with us today on Lead Up for Women, Speak Up to Lead Up. We're so thankful that you're here to talk about the power of kindness. So ladies, as you're listening to this today, practice kindness and not random acts, but practice kindness. And what can you do today that can provide kindness for others? And don't forget to be kind to yourself. And remember, ladies, you are the only you that has ever been. You are the only you that will ever be. You are that unique. So how you pioneer your future is up to you. And remember, no one's coming. You must give yourself permission to hit go. All right, ladies, we are so thankful you joined us today. We hope that you will spread kindness this week. And thank you again, Jill, for joining us. And we'll see you all next week. Take care and goodbye.